Hello, Jerry? Oh. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, Jerry, it's Lou. How you doing, man? Are we supposed to be shooting a show? Oh. Oh. Hang, on, hang on a second, okay? Uh. Yeah, Jerry, I I'm going to need you to come over. Yeah. Whew. I got that plug toilet. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, my wife has the hemorrhoids. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. Sorry, like, sorry about pl that plug toilet thing. Oh. Yeah, we're trying to do this thing. Hey, Ronnie. Yeah, 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 yeah. What were we doing? I was, oh, there goes my phone again. Hold on. I was looking Hold at some on. pictures. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, Let's just do this real quick and we can get back to our phones. Yeah, because this is really, this is cutting into my cell phone time. Yeah. Cell phone etiquette rules you should be following but aren't next. Everywhere you go today, people are on their phones. Everywhere you look. And it drives me nuts that you cops aren't pulling these people over or using their cell phones while driving. I mentioned the other day I saw a truck driver on his phone like this driving a big 18-wheeler down the road. Yep. You could literally write a ticket every time you turned around. Uh, you could write literally three you could write three in an hour. Yep. Trust me. Yep. Don't be caught committing cellular phone sins. Follow our expert phone etiquette rules to avoid being rude and annoying on your smartphone. Ronnie, or you, rude and impolite. Do you remember her? Yes, the teacher, teacher at El Camino. Yeah. <laughs> Redundancy Department of Redundancy. <laughs> Ronnie, what's first? All right, first up, put your phone away at the dinner table. Oh, for God's sakes, people, please. Oh, this is this is so annoying. Are you that important? I remember I used to say, uh, are you what what are you as important as Donald Trump? That was right. before he was even That's president. Before he was president. <laughs> yeah. He's probably more important then than yeah. he is now, yeah. The phone etiquette rule may seem obvious because, hello, yeah. it's rude. It is, hello. But being courteous in public to both uh, your dining partner and other diners is also important, says Amy Rice. Uh, parenting etiquette and financial expert Brad Graff adds, if it rings and you must answer it, explain to your dining companions that you have your child at home by him or herself and that you're waiting for, or that you're waiting for a huge business deal to close. Otherwise... Ignore it. I can tell you this. I think it's extremely rude for people to use their phones at any dinner table, whether you're at home yeah. or out to dinner. And uh, I have uh, our big Gallagher family Christmas dinner coming up where we're going out. And I think this year we're going to go to Red Robin. Ooh. <laughs> I'm telling you now because you're in for it, Red Robin. I was just there a week ago. I amazing. will be sure that everyone puts their cell phone in a pile on the center of the table, and the first pe person to grab for their phone Pays the bill. gets to pay the bill. Yes. And trust me, it's a big bill, okay? <laughs> I pay for it every year. But this may be a first. Yeah, that would be great. All right, next up. Uh, you should end conversations when paying for purchases. I cannot believe yep. how many times a day I see someone walk into a store while they're talking on the phone. That is a conversation for inside your car or out in the parking lot, walking around if that's what you need. It is not to be in the store having a conversation. Trust me, no one wants to hear what you're saying. No, no one wants to hear about Aunt Belle's cousin who's dating the guy from the roller rink. And their foot fungus. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty random, huh? <laughs> All right. Uh, just because you may not know the cashier doesn't mean you can keep chatting away while they're helping you. Unless it's an absolute emergency, it's rude, extremely rude, to stay on the phone right in their face. And I get it every day. Yep. Oh, this next one. I deal with this. Never shout when talking on the phone. Hey, Phil. Sorry. You know what? It's like a... It's a thousand dollars for a phone now. This is a thousand dollar piece of equipment. You're not talking about two cans connected with a string anymore. These are very high quality phones. You don't have to shout. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, if too they, much. <laughs> if they can't, maybe you should call them back later. When in public, it's good phone etiquette practice to try not to raise your voice while on the phone. No one else needs to be privy to your conversations or your arguments. Now, the thing, if somebody's talking loud, 
I'm like, okay, well that's rude. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go full on ruder, and I'm gonna listen. Yeah. Oh. I'm gonna listen. Hey, I've never tried that. Oh boy, it nuts people up. Really? Yes. I'm and they're like, do that. hey, I'm gonna have to call you back. Yeah. <laughs> like, thank you. You know what also also works for me? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Was I interrupting you while I was trying to help you? Next up, and this seems pretty obvious, uh, never text or talk and drive. It's my pet peeve. This and you were in an accident. Yes. Well, it wasn't an accident. I take that back. You were in a collision yes. because of it. Many states have laws in place, including California, where we filmed the show, regarding texting and talking on the phone while driving. Hint, spoiler alert, it's a no-no. Ronnie. It's a big ticket. And How much is it right now? Do you know? So if it's your very first one, well, this last one I wrote is like over a year ago, but it, when I went to court, $142. Okay. That's if it's your first one. Mm -hmm. They go up every they go up every time In, you get one. Incrementally. Incrementally, exponentially. They go up every time you get one. And so your next one might be two hundred dollars. And then the next one, three hundred and fifty. Oh man. Um and people get I, I've I pulled a guy over. He was literally right in front of me i was i was driving a big ford expedition canine vehicle the light turns green and he's sitting there yeah i tap my horn to get him to leave you know to get him to i can't see inside get the out car. of my way as he starts he's making u-turn as he makes the u-turn and goes past me he's on his phone and he's looking at me and never puts his phone down like this man's getting a ticket yeah. i pull him over he had one almost a year ago to the date oh wow and he was driving a Mercedes. Mm, and so I asked it. him, I said, I'm almost positive that this car has Bluetooth. Why don't you use it? Yeah. I just prefer not to. Oh. Oh, okay. That's I costly. Said, I said, well, you, you know that these tickets are expensive. I go, and plus it's not safe. And he goes, statistics don't prove it's not safe. Uh, conversely, I would argue that yes, they do. Yeah. Uh, I just saw something that said... Oh man, I, I wish I could remember the exact percentage, but it's something like 70% of all accidents now can be traced back to texting or talking on the phone. Mm -hmm. I believe it. Uh, I was rear-ended recently in a uh, hit and run. Yep. And, uh, you know, as I explained the situation to Ronnie, the police officer, retired, um, he goes, oh yeah, that person was texting. That's that's the only thing it could be. How can you hit a just something that's just sitting a there? A car that stopped. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, avoid texting in work meetings. Yeah, this never looks good on you when you do this. Boy, that's a bad, bad habit. Leave eat. your phone out to, at your desk. Oh, boy, yeah, definitely. Uh, you don't want your boss looking up and seeing you texting away and completely ignoring what's going on. Plus, if you're the boss, it's setting a bad example for your workers. Yeah. Uh, I just, I can't imagine, why even go to the meeting if you're going to sit there and just text the whole time? Yeah, and see, here's the thing. If you have your phone on you and someone calls, it's going to distract you for, even if it's just for a few seconds. However, if you don't have your phone on you and you leave it at your desk for that meeting, right. you don't know that you missed the call until right. you get back to the phone. And guess what? Nothing's changed. You'll still be alive and everybody will... Exactly. Yeah, nothing and changed. especially everyone will still be alive. Yeah. Okay? Yep. Next off, turn off, off the phone in places such as church or theaters or concerts or ball games. Rice says there are no exceptions to this rule. There are just certain places where cell phones should be and often are off limits. And remember, checking your phone and having it light up in a dark theater, even if you don't talk, text, or tweet, is equally as rude. Please understand that, yep. okay? Again, turn your phone off. Put it on plane mode, airplane mode. That's the best advice that I can give you. Yep. That way you're not tempted. Uh, this next one is avoid talking on the phone in a waiting room, but if you must, leave the area first. Yeah. Uh, I know I, I'm usually pretty good at my my doctor, and eh, they'll have you sitting in the waiting room for ten minutes or so. Right. And I usually I have a Yahtzee game on mm -hmm. my phone. I turn on Yahtzee quietly and I play Yahtzee. But there are people in there that think that the waiting room is a place to get caught up on all their phone calls. Uh, 
It, trust me, it's not. How important do you think you are? Right. That you need to share this conversation with Aunt Stevie <laughs> about the upcoming dinner. Right. I don't want to hear about it. Next, avoid using a phone on public transportation, and I'll take it one step for, uh, further. Avoid using a phone in the restroom. <laughs> Do I really, really need to tell you this? But the acoustics are good. In there. <laughs> I'm taking care of business, friend. <laughs> on public transportation, people are often stressed, rushing, or even exhausted. All they want to do is get where they're going, not listen to your freaking conversation about your cousin's new boyfriend's sister. Be courteous when you're out in public. Enjoy the moment and your friends. But above all, be smart about your smartphone manners. Now, I will say this. If you get in an Uber or a Lyft and your driver looks sketchy, yeah. I'm going to keep your phone in your hand and dial 91 <laughs> and wait for that the, second for one. For the final one. Yeah. <laughs> Just in case. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever Ubered? Yes. I haven't. Uh, we did it in San Francisco. Do you know why I haven't? No. Because I'd have to be in a car with someone I don't know. <laughs> that, that ain't going to happen. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Well, we were, uh, a, a group of us went from my daughter's apartment in San Francisco to the uh, Alcatraz oh, pickup yeah. point. Mm hmm and so, and parking is in the city is awful, horrid. And so there were like six of us, and so we took an Uber from her apartment to the uh, drop-off point. They sent a van. They sent a brand spanking new suburban. Oh wow! Uh, the driver was wearing it was black, mm -hmm. and and literally couldn't have been more than a week or two old. The driver was wearing like a Tiger Woods uh, cap and a leather vest. Unbelievably professional. I got a very good vibe from the very first, my very first Uber ride. Do you have to talk to him? Uh, the, you don't have to. Okay, good. No, but he was, and he was very content just to drive. But then my wife had to ask about his brand new vehicle. Oh. And so she was asking, and apparently there are age restrictions. You cannot drive an Uber if your vehicle is too old. So, like, if you're driving a 73 AMC Pacer, that ain't going to cut it. Damn. Yeah, sorry. That cuts out my whole uh, income stream right there. <laughs> All right, next. Lower your voice when you're using your phone in public. Please, people. Okay. I, I think we've kind of covered this, but again, really, your, your conversations are your conversations. We don't even want to be included in them. Uh, some of them are juicy. I still don't want to hear them. And you may see me, again, being painfully obvious that I'm eavesdropping mm -hmm. to get you to put your phone down or shut up. Um, yeah, it's... Come on. Well, to summarize this entire episode, cell phones can and will destroy all your interpersonal dealings. You should not even give the screen a glance while you're speaking to someone at a party or a dinner. Sometimes it's best to think of how would you feel if that happened to you? If it would bother you, then you probably shouldn't do it to somebody else. Uh, you know, take care of that on your own time. Um, if you're with me, I expect your full attention. Yeah. And, and, and I will return it equally. You know, and as far as being out in public on your cell phone, at, at say a restaurant, we talked about it earlier, if you want to get there and you want to take a picture of the family sitting at the table. Take a picture of your food. If you have to. <laughs> In fact, you should have that phone put away before your food comes to you, as far as I'm concerned. But you know, when you first get there, you want to take a picture with your cousin or your uncle or your whatever. That's all well and good. But when you sit down and you have menus to look at, that's it. Time's up. Put the phone down. And once again, if you pick it up, you're paying for dinner. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. That good deal. Fair. That's, yeah. a, that's a good rule of thumb. You know, it seems like we have to do a lot of these shows, Ron, about cell phone etiquette. We're constantly and reminding addiction. people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's, I, that's I, our job here. Yeah, that's what we do. We tell you what to do. Right. <laughs> we suggest. Because we've been told we're, by our wife <laughs> yeah. what to do, so we're just passing along the info. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hope you enjoyed the program. Perhaps even learned something. If you did, please subscribe to our show and click the bell. The bell will give you notifications each time a new show comes out. If you had fun, 
You like Ronnie, you like me, you like us both, you like neither of us, thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, you like my, my facial hair. Oh, yeah, we it's, haven't talked about that. It's got to go today. Oh, it does? Yeah, Why? I'm working tonight. Oh. Got to cut it all off. Oh, man, oh, man. Yeah. Are you going to grow back after that? or mm. You got a lot of work coming up? Yeah, I don't really have anything else coming up until January. So no, no police officer can have a beard? No. Well, None. not not the not in the sheriff's department. Oh, okay. Uh, and part of the reason is uh, we wear these uh, masks for uh, like if we're going in a burning building, we yeah. have like a self-contained uh, breathing apparatus type oh, okay, thing. Okay, yeah. Doesn't fit tight mm -hmm. against beards and or against a, a beard. I don't even know what my face looks like without this mustache. <laughs> I have no idea. It's well, I was so my plan. Was to grow it long enough, I was going to do a Richard Rawlings. Oh, is uh, that the... From uh, Gas Monkey Garage. The he's, rubber band? He's, he's got it kind of tapered down to a point here. Oh, yeah. He's, you'll have to look it up. you have to Google okay. it. He's, he's done a very nice job with his facial hair. I like that dude. He's pretty cool. He is. From the first time I saw him, I knew he was cool. He is, uh, and he's very business savvy. I like him. Uh, I like his show. Mm. So that was, my, that was my goal, was to do a Richard Rawlings lookalike. So on the next show, perhaps you'll see, Ronnie will be clean shaven again. And I, on the other hand, probably won't. <laughs> no. I wouldn't want to scare you. <laughs> All right. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. And uh, we phoned in this episode. <laughs> so we got to get out of here. We'll see you. Oh, my phone's ringing. We finish up. All right. Uh, hey, we'll see you on the next episode of Men Are hey, Bill. So Smart. Yo, Bill. On Men What's Are going So on? Smart, I say. You got that car wash bucket I need? Bye. Yeah.